All right, we're live. We're back at it. Man, what's it been like? A, a three weeks, four weeks? I don't know. It feels like a, I mean, well, January was 98 days long. Okay. Yeah. And then February <laughs> was another like 74 or something like this, whatever that is, a few months. So, yeah. uh, but, but uh, we're in the legal tampering period. So that's, that's back on. I got to say, I like the term. I'm going to, I'm going to be controversial. You are. Cause I was going to say, that's not a good term. That's I the, like the term man. because it's it, it, it's paradoxical, right? Like it doesn't yeah. like it it can't exist, right? Tampering, legal, like those two things are opposite. But they decided to like coin this term and and they defined it and they created a definition for it, right? So so it's a term. It's it's what they use, what the league uses. So it's yeah. accurate to use the term legal tampering because that's what the league uses. But our good mutual friend. Ken Mitchell and you as well. And I am people. not a fan of the term. It just hate it. Yeah. It's like nails on a chalkboard. So I, I like to use it. <laughs> just to kind of twist the knife on people. Well, it's, that's what it, that's what the it league is. What, yeah. Is. yeah. So it's not wrong. No, they defined it. It's like sometimes things pop up and it's like, it, it doesn't sound right, but that's what, that's just common. That's what everyone goes by now. So what are you going to do? It is, it is, it is the term. Now people use it. I get it. I'm just still not going to be a fan. Well, we, uh, we don't have as much to talk about as we might've thought oh, we do. But we're we're going to launch on our podcast here. Those of you that are joining us, you know, feel free to pop in some comments and, you know, we'll, we'll hang around and get to those afterwards. Uh, those of you that, have been with us before may notice that I have a new microphone that is uh, team colored and Lester I have is it's, it's lazy here. and it's hasn't here. set his up yet, <laughs> but he's going to, you going to show it to him. Yeah, I'll show it. It's, it's, it's uh, what's exciting is that. So this is, these were gifts from our friend EJ Snyder. Uh, very kind gifts. Uh, if you if you've watched his show Bootleg, he's got one of these that is black and gold. Uh, but he got us. He said, "Hey, what what colors do you want?" And so I I picked out these you know team appropriate colors. Oh and man, Lester look at that! Not the opposite, so that we are bare and balanced on on our uh, on our colors of our microphone. So I mean, uh, pretty cool. Like, pretty cool upgrade. So yeah, we're, we're pretty excited. This will be done before the. Stuff back here, so this will be done. I just got to rearrange you my buy an arm. Yeah, I, I got to get it something because I have like a desk, it's a setup. I got my I work from home some days of the week, so I got that computer here. I got my laptop out of a bunch of boxes to kind of lift it at a good level here, so I just got to do some rearranging here. But but I, I'll get there, I'll get there. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well, let's, let's, let's not, let's, let's not waste too much more time. Let's, let's get yeah. into this thing and and we're going to, we're going to catch, catch up because we haven't talked since the season's been over. So we've got a few things that have happened over this time and then we'll, you know, we'll do a little speculating on, on what's to come. And if something breaks, you know, well, let us can... know. Yeah. Um, please no fake reports in the comments. Although oh. now that I say that people Very are going to do yeah. it, but you know, if there's something that happens, you know, we can react live time. So yeah. you can keep track of that, Lester, as I move the board. So let's uh, let's take a timestamp here and let's launch into a podcast. Perfect. Welcome to Bear and Balance. I'm Jeff Burkus, a writer for Windy City Gridiron, and I'm joined by the editor of that fine website, Lester A. Wiltfong Jr. Lester, it is legal tampering. Uh, we are good. in the new year, kind of, almost yeah. there. And the Bears enter with, um, you know kind of uh kind of a roar but but pretty soft one at that yeah they made a few moves prior to the early negotiation period that that kicked off today at 11 a.m and then uh you know i mean they got the jalen johnson deal done so they they made some minor splashes here to kind of help the team but yeah today is not like last year man last year was exciting you know 15 minutes in, linebacker. A few minutes later, another linebacker. They dumped a ton of cash. They don't have as much money as last year, but they are still, I think, fifth in the NFL in effective cap space, so there's some money to play with here. That's even after the Jalen Johnson deal. So I thought we'd see something. Um, I'm guessing they were in on some of these guys that went elsewhere, and uh, it just didn't work out, which we did see Ryan Ryan Poles do last year. He was in on Mike McGlinchey. The guarantee's got a bit too high. He bowed out. 
So I think maybe, maybe he's kind of in the same same boat. It's going to be his deal, and I guess that's that's probably a good thing. Doesn't like to shop on the premium shelf very much, although yeah. there are a couple players still out there. We won't necessarily close the door on all of them, and we'll get to that maybe uh, towards the end of the show where we talk about maybe what's left and and what's next for uh, for the Bears potentially. But let's talk about the newest Chicago Bear, uh, at least as of this recording, and that is DeAndre Swift. Those of you that watch the NFC North are familiar with DeAndre Swift. He was a draft pick of the Detroit Lions. He was then traded away to uh, the Eagles and then became a free agent and signed a three-year contract worth $24 million, a little over $15 million of that guaranteed, to presumably come in and be the lead back in in the backfield with uh, Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson. So kind of a bad day for the Khalil Herbert fan club if um, that I'm that I'm in charge of. But but otherwise, like, you know, a, a good player, um, maybe not the big, huge splash that some people were hoping for with the Saquon Barkley move, but a, a good player at uh, a price that I think is somewhat reasonable. What was your reaction? Yeah, when I first saw it, I saw the money. I'm like, well, he, he's a good player. He, he's obviously younger than Barkley, younger than Josh Jacobs, who the Bears were rumored to be in on. Uh, the money, I didn't catch the Josh Jacobs money yet, but the Saquon deal, Swift came way under that. This is essentially a two-year deal. And then the third year, of course, like most contracts, is like we'll see what happens there. They may have to, have to cut them. But my concern when I first saw the deal was how is he in pass pro? So I reached out to some guys. I'm like, hey, you know, that, 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 have, that know him a little better than I do. And they said he's not the best in pass pro. Um, but then I saw something. Uh, I wish I would have grabbed the tweet. I forget who tweeted out. But so Shane Waldron, the Bears' new OC, he doesn't keep his tailbacks in very often to pass block. It's like 17% of <laughs> Yeah, you saw that. Okay, so it's like 70% of the time. So that tells me that he either has a tailback leaking out in the flat running routes, angle routes or something, or he prefers to keep a tight end or or or, or an H back in to block. So I, I guess I understand what, he, what he's doing here. Uh, Swift is a little more explosive um, than last year's free agent pickup, Deontay Foreman. Um, he's a little more explosive than, than what Bears fans are used to. I mean, we're used to Khalil Herbert, but Swift is a little more of an all-around guy as far as he can catch the ball out of the backfield. I, I like the signing for who he is and what he, what he brings to the Bears. I'm not a huge guy to pay tailbacks in this market, but for what the bears want to do, I think this is a good pickup for them. Well, I think Swift is going to be that guy that is going to be the primary ball catcher out of the backfield. Um, He's going to run a lot more routes than say Khalil Herbert can, you know, Khalil Herbert is one of the best runners in the game. If you just want to turn around and hand the ball off, you're not going to get much better than Khalil Herbert. I mean, there's a lot of, really good advanced statistics that'll back that up. And if outside of Nick Chubb, you can start making an argument that Khalil Herbert's the best runner, but, but he just doesn't have that other pieces of his game that he's been able to stack together. And so you see, if you're trying to build a complimentary backfield, you need a guy like this who is particularly good uh, um, catching the ball out of the backfield. You mentioned Josh Jacobs. Jacobs goes to the Packers for four years, forty-eight million. So that is a, a much steeper deal okay. for for That's Josh Jacobs. Deal. Jacobs essentially replaces Aaron Jones. So once they sign Jacobs, they cut Aaron Jones. So now Aaron Jones uh, is a, is a free agent. So there was this brief moment in time where it looked like the Packers were maybe signing uh, Jacobs to complement uh, Aaron Jones, and they were going to have this you know, kind of really uber talented backfield, depending on how you feel about Josh Jacobs. Uh, Aaron Jones has been killing the bears for years. So like, I, I'm years. not going to take any questions on him. Like he's a good, he's a good football player. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's towards the end of his career, but he's, he's a good football player. Uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, Peter Bukowski from uh, our, our, our friends over there at, at cheese headland, you know, got really excited. And then about two minutes later, they released Aaron Jones and he's like, Oh damn. Uh, and, and, you know, that that thing that happens to to us all, but uh, he's he's essentially a replacement there. Uh, the the Eagles are the ones that landed Saquon Barkley, so he's essentially replacing Swift, right? Like so, this there's kind of this interesting musical chairs of, of backs going on because you know David Montgomery went to Detroit to to replace Swift, right? So there's there's just kind of this dancing around with some of these backs here. 
and some of the speculation on pretty healthy contracts for these running backs, which has not happened over the last few years, is that the draft that's uh, upcoming here is pretty shallow in the running back market. There's not a lot to get excited about there. And so you saw a lot of action. Tony Pollard also signed um, early. So, so you saw a lot of action with running backs getting knocked off the board real quick. Yeah, that happens every year. That's a lot of things a lot, a lot of fans don't take in, into consideration during free agency is, well, how does the draft stack up at these positions? This is some obviously that the teams have been, have been, have been, had their, their, had their eye on it for a long time. They understand that's probably the best way to go. That's probably why the Bears were linked to so many tailbacks, you know, during the last few weeks, because it just seemed like they weren't going to go with the running back in the draft they get their guy it should be a good running back room now I, I, it looks like swift obviously with the money you know he's gonna probably be the primary but you know herbert's quality roshan johnson showed some stuff last year uh travis homer still there probably gonna be your special teams guy he was with shane waldron for a couple years in seattle so he's he's familiar with him uh carry blasting games a fullback now waldron didn't use a fullback a lot in seattle he used more of a tight end and, and, and an h-back role but that's the same thing. It's he may use blasting game there. So the one thing I like about Shane Waldron is he'll utilize the people on his roster. Uh, so it's going to be curious to see how he kind of mingles all these guys in and, and gets the Bears running game going. I reached out to uh, a Detroit writer that that I've got a good relationship with, and I said, "All right, let me hear it. You know what's what's the deal with Swift?" And you know he's like, "Look, I'm I'm a fan. I like him." Um, the, the Obviously, when they when they drafted, um, you know, the young guy last year, he knew he was going to be on the move. But uh, he he said the thing with with uh, Swift was that every time it seemed like he was ready to just break out, he'd get hurt. Yeah. And, he you know, he has missed a lot of games in his career. And that's something that we're going to have to, you know, just keep in mind that he, he has not been able to stay healthy. When you pair that up with Khalil Herbert, who also has missed some games, obviously we we saw Roshan miss some games as well this last year. You know, concussion a little bit different um, in terms of not like a, a leg injury or anything like that. But you know, these guys have missed time. Also, that's pretty common with running backs. I mean, running backs get get dinged up and beat up. That's why you want to build um, a good stable of these guys. So that as of right now, that's the day one headlining signing. Uh, and so, you know, it's maybe not what we expected. I think we, we expected, uh, you know, an offensive lineman potentially, you know, we we expected defensive lineman potentially, but you know, that that's where we're at right now. Now we're going to kind of go a little bit back in time and and cover some of these other guys. Let's talk about, uh, Kevin Byard safety, a long time with the, with the Titans two time first team all pro in his career, really good football player. I mean, this is. is a really good football player. He's a guy that, uh, so he signed for two years, $15 million. Um, so, you know, pretty good market for, for a safety. And he comes off before the start of free agency because he was you know, a vested veteran that's released, um, you know, before, before the cycle starts. So he's able to sign uh, before the, the league year. I, I mean, I just can't, I, I love watching this guy. I've watched Titans defense. He's a really good player. It's just the guy that's towards the end of his career. So you're hoping that he doesn't, fall off that, that athletic cliff and he's able to continue to contribute. Uh, but he's going to bring a lot of veteran leadership. He basically steps into that Eddie Jackson role. You just hope that the athletic skills are still there long enough to be able to, you know, f- provide some value out of that. Contract. Yeah. I mean, during his career, he's kind of played uh, free. Uh, he's played some strong and kind of do both with, with the bear scheme is, you know, they, they don't want to move those guys around. You know, they'll kind of play you where you are, depending on how, how the offense lines up. And I think with Brisker, you know, Brisker, I know he, because of Jackson, he was more of the guy that was up in the box, but I think Brisker has, has enough uh, athleticism and skills to kind of play uh, a little deeper on occasion. So it'll be a nice to see how, how they use them both. Um, but with, 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 with Biard though, man, 120 some odd tackles last year, you know, I know a lot of bears fans were not happy with Eddie Jackson, sometimes making business decisions when it comes to tackle. Um, that's not with, with this guy, this guy's gonna, gonna, he will lay the wood, him and Brisker are, are a good tandem back there. And this really sets the, the whole secondary up. I mean, this is going to be a good secondary. And then if they, if they sign another edge here in free agency, you know, this defense can really take a big step. Well, I saw some you know, speculation or some, maybe some questions, people and absolutely right when this signing happened, people said, is this the best secondary in the league? 
Yeah. You, you know, like I was, you know, we always have to go right to the top, right? Like, yeah. well, is this the best secondary in the league? And it's like, well, maybe we just like, could it be one of the best? Like, maybe yeah. we just start there. And and I think I saw uh, Brad Spielberger maybe field this one and say, uh, on paper, it looks like it could contend to be that, but it certainly has to play out, right? Like that's 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 where you're at because you still have to get those next steps from from some of these other players and and hope that you know Bayard still has plenty left in the tank. But again, a good athlete um, has had a really good career. He was traded last year from a bad team to a contending team. Didn't necessarily play all that well on the Eagles um, down late, but you know. We've, we've seen that with midseason trades. Is that because he's, you know, maybe regressing a little bit or is that because just new situation, new defense and being thrown in, you know, who knows? And, and I can't say that I sat there and watched safety tape of the, of the Eagles. I just know that like he, it was maybe not quite the, the level that they were hoping for down the stretch, but I really like this player. He's, you know, he's a, locker room guy i think is is certainly one of those you know personalities going to be able to provide that veteran leadership and um show those guys what first team all pro play looks like right like i mean yeah. he's, he's been there he's played at a high level um so i i would imagine that this is just a really good character signing and a really good leadership signing in addition to what he can give on the field in terms of performance yeah, I mean, he's replacing a guy that kind of had that role. So it's uh, he's going to step into the role of leadership, uh, the veteran back there. So it's a good pickup for them. And like you said, if, if Tyreek Stevenson uh, takes a nice step, uh, if Kyler Gordon takes another step, Brisker takes another step, yeah, this this, this secondary could be uh, talked amongst a, a top five unit next year for sure. Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's keep it in the secondary and talk about Jalen Johnson. Nice. So he was franchise tagged uh, for a minute. And then before you knew it, we got a contract extension, which was great to see. Obviously, you and I talked about this last year. This was our priority for, for Ryan Poles last year to, to try to extend. Didn't happen. He, you know, he chose to go a different route with, with his internal extension money, I guess, to, to, to get Cole Komet on an extension, which seems like that's probably a good idea too. Cole Komet yeah. had a great year and and these tight ends are signing for, for insane money right now. Uh, but Jalen obviously played incredible in his, in his final uh, year of the rookie contract, uh, set himself up here four years, $76 million contract, uh, about 44 of that guaranteed a really healthy Mark. Um, they, they finally came in to, to uh, an, an agreement here. I, I don't think it's, an overpay by any stretch of the imagination for one of the best corners in the league. Um, but I don't think he took a, you know, cheap deal or anything like that either. Uh, so the bears are able to keep their corner one and, you know, certainly arguably the best player on their, on their defense. I don't know what people are going to come at me and say sweat, but uh, one of those two guys, right. So they keep one of the best players on the defense and really the anchor of that secondary that allows you to make a statement like, this could be the best secondary in the league. Yeah, when they sign him, and I saw some talk right away on social media from some of the usual analytic guys. Oh, it's you know the the numbers are kind of goofy, but you know it was a good win win type of deal because he got the same amount of money he would have got had he had a double franchise tag. He got a little more guaranteed. The average kind of works out, so it's under twenty, which is still kind of nice to see as for the Bears. But you know, it's he is still young enough to where he can get one more big deal. Out of out of out of the NFL. So, if he's relatively healthy, and that's been an issue with him during his career, he missed a couple games every season. You know, but if if you're only missing a few games each year, you know that's that, that's fine. That that's doable. T teams will still pay you for that as long as it's not chronic. I know uh, Mason West was kind of talking a little bit about some of his shoulder issues. How they seem like they may be behind him. They're not like chronic. The stuff he had this last season. So, if he stays healthy, if, if he if he lives up to the contract. He may cash in one more time, whether it's in Chicago or elsewhere, but good deal for him and a good deal for the Bears, and it's a good deal to keep that defense intact. So obviously he had kind of an interesting press conference. We're not going to necessarily touch <laughs> some of the things that he talked about, but one thing that he did say was he wanted to be the best number 33 in team history, which I thought was very interesting. And uh, you know, my favorite player of all time is Charles Tillman, who wore number 33. And so just kind of like, okay, like that's a pretty good goal yeah. for a guy like Jalen. I mean, he, you know, he, he sets his goals high. 
it's interesting because he, I mean, you know, he's, he's cognizant of the number, obviously the peanut Tillman an outstanding bear. You know, I think that's, that's, that's cool that he's, that he's aware of that. That's cool that he's going to shoot for that. You got to have goals. I mean, these, these athletes, they all have, have things they're striving for. And, you know, a couple more pro bowls, you know, another all pro, he may be in that mix. Why not? <clears throat> Why not him? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, all right. So that's, Good, good job, Ryan Poles. We're very happy that you yeah. you were able to keep him and and make him a bear for another four years. And good job, Ryan Poles, for finally getting your man. <laughs> wow, uh, Ryan Bates, the guard who or interior offensive lineman, let's say, uh, from from the Buffalo Bills. If you remember, a couple years ago, Ryan Poles signed Ryan Bates to uh, an offer sheet. And I saw a little bit of conversation about this on Twitter. Like, well, you know, there were only two teams bidding on a back. There were multiple teams actually that tried to sign Ryan Bates yeah. to an offer sheet. Bates chose the bears yeah. to sign with. And then the bills had the opportunity to match that. No one thought they would because they were pretty deep on offensive line. It was a pretty healthy contract for a guy that really wasn't a primary starter for them, but they did. And, and it was one of these that like kind of got away. It was just this like kind of sad moment because Poles really wasn't able to do much his first year. And, and this was like kind of seemed like his kind of signature move. He pivots off of that and goes to uh, sign Lucas Patrick, which was kind of his like premier signing that year. And, you know, Patrick did what he, I mean, Patrick wasn't very good necessarily overall, but like, you know, he's not a bad um, overall presence in, in the locker room or anything. But the Bills needed to make some moves, and uh, Poles gets his guy. Trades a fifth rounder this year to be able to get him. It's a pretty nice cost control contract at this point because most of the the money the Bills already paid it, yeah. and so it's I think it's only four million dollars for yeah. for Bates this year. Which is if you watched free agency today with some of these offensive line contracts, I wore my Tevin Jenkins shirt because. Tevin Jenkins didn't make any money today, but Tevin Jenkins made a lot of money today. Guards got paid. Today. Guards I got paid. It. Yes, I love. So it. when Tevin Jenkins is going to be up for contract next year, uh, he's going to make some money because those guys made a lot. So uh, I think it's an interesting move because when when it happened, I thought, okay, great. The he, Bulls gets his guy. Obviously, he likes him. He likes everything about him, and it's an interior offensive line depth piece. So if Tevin misses some time, if Nate Davis misses some time, if your if your center misses some time, he can step in and play any of those roles. And you know, he's got a history of being able to do that. The the piece that's maybe lacking there is that the, the center, like yeah. the, the the guy that you're gonna sign or draft maybe to to play center. Um, if that guy misses, well, right now that guy doesn't exist. That that didn't happen in day one in free agency. Uh, a couple of the guys that we thought maybe could be targets are already um, signed to play with other teams. And so as of right now, Ryan Bates is your projected to be your, your starting center. So what did you think of the move and where do you think that particular position is sitting at right now? When, when I first saw the move made, I'm like, you know, the money, I knew the money was kind of, it was basically Ryan Poles' contract that he signed him to. So I wasn't aware that the bills were going to keep some of that cash. So when I saw it was only a four year, 4 million for this year, next year, I'm like, well, that's, that's a good deal. The bears are essentially having to replace Cody Whitehair, Lucas Patrick and Dan Feeney. So they have three guys that started games with them last year on the interior. They have to replace. So I'm like, okay, Ryan Bates is going to be your swing. Then we hear the buzz, you know, Brad Biggs, Greg Gabriel, oh, this is the center. Uh, you know, let's see what happens in free agency. I mean, we're one day in and, and Lloyd Cushbury is off the market. He, he signed a pretty big deal somewhere else. So uh, we saw some other centers kind of go off the market. Like you said, a pretty, pretty substantial money. Maybe Bates is the center. I mean, Bates is better than what the Bears had last year at center. But I was hoping for a little higher bar. I was hoping that Bates could be your swing it still could happen. I mean, they still may make a move. There's some guys out there that have some experience, but if you go into it with Ryan Bates as your guy, like I said, it's better than what they had last year. You still got some moves to make because you are missing, like I said, all those guys that played last year on the interior. Nate Davis missed time. We know Tevin Jenkins going to miss time. 
last year's center missed time. So who is the in swing guy? If it's not Bates, then you better go out there and spend a little bit of cash on a, on a veteran you trust because you don't have a lot of draft picks this year. So there has to be another move coming. And I'm assuming, like I said, we're only a few hours in the free, in the free agency. So something's going to happen. Now, one of those potential moves is the Dolphins center, who uh, Connor Williams, who yes. tore his ACL late in the year last year. And in talking to Mason West, a little bit about recovery from an ACL and when you can kind of get back on the field, you know, he was saying for an NFL player, uh, you know, eight, eight, nine months or something like that, where you can kind of get back to be able to play, you're not going to be 100 percent, but you know, it's kind of that second year is when you, you get back to that fully, fully healthy mark. And I said, well, does that count? For, this is the same thing for big guys because, yeah. you know, do you need to like lose the weight to be able to help with like the load bearing to get back up? And and then you got to put the weight back on and then you got to get into like playing. Like, I feel like for a big guy, it might be a little different. And he was kind of like, ah, I don't really see it that way. I think it's kind of the same. And I, you know, they got those, you know, specialized machines that allow you to, to, to work at the percentage of your body weight and stuff. So I, I would assume with professional care, they can bring a guy along a lot better than it could be. If it was you or me, you know, if, if we tore our ACL, we'd be, Done. you know, we'd be out of commission for, for a lot longer than eight months. We'll just put it that way. Right. And so I, I, I just, uh, I wonder if that's an option for polls at this point, because, you know, we, we heard a, some rumors and some, some rumblings that he liked that player as a potential target moving into the, to the year before the injury. And so, you know, does that injury take you off the board? Maybe you bring him in, you know, that you have baits that can cover you until you feel confident enough in that, in that surgically repaired knee to, to be able to get back on the field. And even if there's maybe some shared time throughout the, throughout the year, uh, you're, you're kind of signing him for 2025 and beyond, right? Like maybe that's part of the plan here. Cause that's a good football player there too. Yeah. If you can get him, I mean, obviously injury is unfortunate, you know, but you know, he may be forced to sign a, a, a shorter term deal. He may sign a two-year deal just to kind of show, Hey, I got to get back to where I was. And, and that obviously is something that bears would benefit from. Like I said, he's a good football player, you know. So if if you if you get him at a, at a comfortable price, you have Bates as your center. You get another veteran inside there. You let a guy like Williams kind of rehab and, and get back to it. And by the time you know mid season rolls around or before, now he's in the mix where he can get back in there and play some games for you. So yeah, I think that that could be on a table. I mean, we haven't seen him go off the board yet, so. You know, he's out there looking. That's probably something he's he's thinking as well, that he may have to take a, a shorter deal. He, he knows the deal. I mean, he got hurt. It sucks. He's in a contract year, you know, but these guys are competitors. At the end of the day, he's going to want to get out there and find a good opportunity to play some games. And if he looks at Chicago and is like, yeah, I, I can go there. I, I can I can be, be the starting center there once I get my rehab done. And I think he takes it, and then if, especially if he thinks that the Bears are on, on the on the come. I mean, they won seven games, you know, last year, three the years, three the year prior. So maybe they he's looking at them as an ascending offense. Shane Waldron's in tow here, so maybe he wants to make a make a move and go somewhere we can kind of rehab his image as well, too. Man, the Dolphins are just bleeding talent today. It's just amazing yeah, how much yeah. they went in last year, and it just did not work out. Yeah. So. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll let somebody else, uh, you know, talk for a minute here for the for the podcast listeners, and we'll be right back on the other side of it. All right, let's talk about it. There it is, Justin Fields. So, I don't know how to properly introduce this because the civil war on Twitter and. Facebook and on the website and at your supermarket and things um, is, you know, it's been intense. It's been intense. Uh, yeah. There's, you know, a, a faction of fans that um, are very adamant and um, upset uh, at the suggestion of anything else. And I don't even have to tell you what their position is because they're both, both sides have been that same way. Right. So angry. Uh, yeah. Angry, angry at each <laughs> other. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think, 
you have to kind of step back. So, you know, everybody's a Bears fan. And, yeah. and I think the vast majority of fans are somewhere in the middle. Um, but, but, you know, there's a pretty vocal uh, group of fans that are pretty adamant that Justin Fields is staying. And why are you talking about um, Justin Fields being traded? And there's a very vocal um, part of the fan base that, it, you know, is picking fights and, and getting mad and throwing things, um, saying, like, obviously he's, he's getting traded. Uh, from everything that we've seen and heard, you know, the, the Bears are going to select almost certainly Caleb Williams in, at number one overall in the draft, and they're going to try to trade Justin Fields. It didn't happen before free agency. It didn't happen today um, after the, you know, the, the quarterback dominoes started to fall. And so where does that leave the Bears with Justin Fields? Where does Justin Fields potentially play football in the next year? I mean, on this show, we're going to operate under the principle that what we've heard is true and that yeah. they are going to move Justin Fields. Um, but you have any sense of where that could be at this point? Yeah, it's just a weird situation. I mean, if if as a franchise, if you decide, if you have already decided, hey, Fields isn't our guy, okay, if that's the decision that was made, you can't keep him. You know, if, if the best your, your trade is going to be a fourth or fifth round pick or worse, that sucks. You know, it is what it is. That's what the market is. That's what the other league, that's what the league's telling you what he's worth right now. So if you've decided as a franchise, we're going to move on and we're going to draft the top quarterback on our board, presumably Caleb Williams, there's no way this can coexist. It just doesn't happen. Um, the Caleb Williams, he was supposed to come in to Chicago. Uh, there was an Albert Breer story. I think it was like a week ago, right after the combine, right? Where, where, uh, it, the way it's presented on like Facebook on the Facebook memes was, Oh, Caleb canceled on the bears. But the way Breer wrote it was they decided to reschedule they meeting Caleb and the bears because of his pro days coming up and like, well, they, they didn't want him flying all around the country with so much stuff going on. They said, just do that. You know? So at some point they'll get his medicals. At some point they'll have their meeting. At some point they'll have their private visit. They'll go to his pro day, you know, and if, if, if they got to move fields for, for less than what they want, what option do they have right now? Cause there's, like I said, you cannot have them in there. It just would not be good for, for the franchise it would not be good for the locker room. Yeah. They're all professionals. They'll all deal with it, but still, you know, I, I saw something years ago it was written on, it was one of the SB Nation sites. It was a, I forget the name a former NFL player. He used to write for him. He said a locker room is not a hive, you know, there are clicks in, within the locker room. Not everyone loves everyone, you know, so why, why have that happen? Why, why give it a chance to, Oh, we're team Caleb. Oh, we're team fields. We see how bad it is with our fans. We're a bunch of idiots right now. The way we're all going on about this whole thing, what happens will happen. So let's see what happens. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not necessarily of the belief that Ryan polls, you know, can create a market, um, out of thin air or that he tanked a market. I think you're starting to see some things being thrown around in, in, in terms of, of, you know, arrows at, at Ryan polls for, for messing up Justin Fields market. He that he asked, he was too greedy. He asked for too much. And now, and now he's hold, left holding the bag. And I, and I suppose that if polls just said no to like a fifth round pick in February, um, I, I don't think that that's being too greedy and asking too much because that's not a lot of value, right? Like yeah. that, that's not, that's not something to get excited about. Obviously he's, he's hoping to get more. Um, maybe he gets that more in the future. Maybe he doesn't, I'm not, I'm not predicting the future, but you know, generally a market is when two or more teams are looking to, to compete against each other. Yeah. Right. And I think polls did what he could. He tried to work through the media and there was a lot of reports, you know, from the rap reports and the Schefters and the Tom Palisarios and, and all that, where it was, you know, bears are bears are expecting multiple, you know, have, have multiple teams calling and, yeah. and, you know, it was a second round picks and, you know, day one pick or day two picks that, you know, like kind of, I think he was seeding the, the media with, with these ideas. And the reality is it probably wasn't there. And, you know, you're seeing that a little bit. Um, maybe polls thought that that, Fields would be the most attractive um, option for a lot of people. And, and it was certainly more of Kirk Cousins first. You know, people were interested in Baker Mayfield, who who signed back with with Tampa. 
uh, obviously if you, ha- if you haven't heard cousins went to, to Atlanta. And so that was the destination for uh, a lot of people picking include myself included that, you know, you would, you would think that Justin Fields could go to Atlanta. Well, that's off the board now that you've got that Russell Wilson was released from Denver yeah. and he, so the, the Broncos ate like $80 million in dead money. And so now Russell Wilson's basically free. Now, I don't know that that's a good thing or a bad thing, but the Steelers who were another popular option uh, destination for fields, the Steelers were like, well, we can sign this guy for a million dollars. Yeah. And like, you know, maybe he'll give us decent play. Maybe he won't, but it's a, you know, it's a bargain. Well, we're, you're not going to get that anywhere else. No. Right. And then when Luke gets, signed in Vegas, I was like, well, that's off the board. I mean, they, they, I think you could tell that that, that relationship didn't work. And then they signed Gardner Menchu for pretty good money, by the way, um, yeah. not, not too long ago. And I just thought that's a perfect signing for Luke Getze. That's a Luke Getze quarterback. How yeah. many times did I tell you that I thought Tyson Bajant was poor man's Gardner Menchu? Right. So, you know, these these potential destinations for Justin Fields just kind of keep drying up. And and so I think you're seeing now where polls probably has to pull back a little bit here, regroup, um, see where the dust has settled with this quarterback movement and and now kind of say, OK, is it you know, are the Patriots interested Are the Giants interested? Uh, you know, Broncos yeah, I don't know. mentioned as a go there, too. So. So, you know, kind of regroup here and see if somebody wants to make a move before the draft. And you hope, I think for the, for the sanity of a lot of bears fans and bears <laughs> communities that yeah. we get a resolution here soon. Well, polls even said he wants to do right by Justin. I mean, is that keep him or is that send him somewhere that, that makes sense for him? I mean, it's, it's such a weird, weird area where it's like the report today was, Oh, they haven't really shopped him seriously yet. You know, that was the report by Rapport that made the rounds through social media. You know, okay, maybe they haven't really because they haven't considered an officer offer comeback that was serious enough to consider. So who knows? I mean, the, these these things are out there. The GMs on 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 every team is playing the game. The agents are playing the game. You know, that's where these these insiders are getting the information. You hear a lot of people say, well, if Ryan Poles doesn't say it, this is the big meme. If Ryan Poles hasn't said it, it's not true. Okay, well, did Ryan Poles say the thing with rap today when, when rap said it? But people are, are 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 all over that. Oh, it's that's that, it never happened because because rap says it. Okay, stop trying to juggle things. Stop trying to move the goalposts. You know, if, if the best things for Fields, if like I said, Ryan Poles knows. I mean, he still can't be deciding. You know, maybe Justin Fields is the guy. Maybe he's not. He either he he has to have conviction in his quarterback. If he believes Fields is the guy, he'll keep him and he'll trade number one for a haul. If he doesn't, then you have to get rid of Justin Fields because you don't believe in him. You're going to take another quarterback. That's just bad for him. So the decision is made. We just don't know what it is. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I feel like we have a pretty good We idea. have an idea. I mean, it sense, yeah. But, but yes. Yeah. I guess until you see something official, you know, we're not, we're not for sure. Um, hopefully again, hopefully we get some resolutions uh, soon. Um, again, I, we are both Justin Fields fans. We, we like the guy. Um, we just sort of from a football logic standpoint came to that conclusion. I don't know, three fourths through the year just kind of seemed like, you know, we, we were heading down that path for sure. And, you know, by the end we just kind of agreed. Um, let's let's leave it there we'll see if we get any resolution here soon and we can react to that but i want to talk about what's left for free agency what's left for the bears i think right now the biggest rumor is daniel hunter there's a lot of smoke uh around the Bears signing a defensive lineman you hear some you know courtney cronin and and brad biggs having some uh, maybe somewhat cryptic tweets uh, Montez sweat who I, you know, shares an agent with, with Daniel Hunter, you know, had like a tweet earlier today and makes it like, uh, oh, I want to draw the line here. You know, I would like to, I'd like to believe, and he's kind of the big fish left stealing from an, a, a division opponent sure would be nice as well. So, um, the bears do need to sign a defensive lineman, whoever that is, a, a guy that can take, um, you know, starter snaps. 
either defensive tackle or defensive end. You've, you've got some flexibility um, with Walker there who can kind of move move in and out. And so uh, I think that that's, that's kind of the obvious piece that needs to, to happen on the defense. On the offense, I think we would like to see at least another interior offensive lineman. I would have liked to have seen a starting center. We talked about that a little bit already. You need at least – one starting level wide receiver. Um, I think yeah. we expect that to be like a, maybe a wide receiver three coming from free agency. And maybe that hope that you get that higher, like that pick nine um, where you get uh, a guy that can step in right away and, and take receiver snaps. Um, you know, so, so you you're adding a couple starters in, in those two different directions. Uh, anything else that you think that the bears really need to address here besides sort of those those uh, depth pieces that happen in every free agency yeah i mean they'll they'll bargain shop a little bit i mean he'll let the market come to him you know the, the, like i said the big prize is is hunter i mean that was that was the buzz i mean we heard a lot of buzz just like the bears were in on running backs we know we didn't know it was swift but we heard tailback that was we kept hearing it we've been hearing the same thing about defensive line um uh, the, uh, the ex dolphin guy wilkins got a got a boatload of money um, so he's off the off the board. You know, the Bears lost Justin Jones, who who played interior D-line for them. You know, they're gonna have to make a move here on the D-line. Um, because like you said, they do have Walker, who's kind of more of a of a jack of all trades guy, kind of play all up and down that line. But they lost uh Ngakwe. Obviously, he's a free agent, you know. So so there's some money to spend here, and it makes sense because you know, we're still talking about Coach Flus. He's still a defensive guy get him his his piece here you know so that way you can hopefully spend your draft picks for a change on on offensive side of the ball because you know i don't want to see them go nuts on on defense in the draft i think at some point you got to kind of balance it out a little bit so if you can get hunter like you said the, the cronin tweet she used to be on the beat in minnesota she would know biggs of course longtime bears beat guy he's talked about d-line you know there's there's a lot of smoke about hunter and plus there's no other teams that have been mentioned. I did see something fly by earlier, possibly uh, I might have been Houston, you know, because they lost Grenard. So Hunter's got to be the pick. And then, of course, you said receiver. Uh, Curtis Samuels, the guy that I thought would make a lot of sense in Chicago, kind of play that. Uh, he's he's not your your big X. He's more of uh, in, the, in the DJ Moore mold. You got to play the slot, a little bit of the Z. I think he's the guy that would make a lot of sense because you, you don't want to wait for the draft to fill these needs it's going to happen. And right now the bears receiving core is, I mean, it's booty. I mean, who, who do you got? You got DJ Moore. That's really all you got. Mooney is going to be gone. I can't see him staying in Chicago. EQ. I mean, he, he's a free agent. He's gone, you know? So Scott, I, I like Scott as a depth piece, but he's not a guy you count on starting. So you got to get a starting receiver. You got to add interior O line and you got to get a uh, defensive lineman. Yeah. Generally, general managers are going to try to fill all of the holes so that when you get to the draft, you're, you know, just trying to improve on those, but you're providing yourself with flexibility. You're not pigeonholing yourself into having to take, you know, certain positions and, you know, bears maybe had to take a tackle last draft, right? Like that felt like that was, you know, that was going to happen. That was good. The bet, right. Then you're going to have to kind of um, spend at that position. But I think the, the theory is sound to try to fill, uh, you know, the rest of the gaps with uh, on defense with some free agents, particularly if you want to spend a little bit here, get some veterans in and then spend your draft picks on offense. You know, Cincinnati did that a few years ago to, to great success, um, you know, and then as their, you know, Burrow and, and uh, Chase, you know, get to that contract where they're going to eat up more of the money that it kind of flips, right? Where you're, you're spending more of your draft picks on, on defense and cause you're, you've got all the money on offense. Right. Yeah. So I, I think right now it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, again, we're expecting the quarterback. I know people don't like this, but we're expecting the quarterback contract um, cycle to, to reset here where you're, you know, you're going to pay the number one overall pick, which is not cheap. Uh, in and of itself, but for a quarterback, you know, that's a, that's a cheaper contract. And so you have some extra money. Plus the bears have put themselves in good financial position. They do have money to be able to spend. They haven't tapped into future years and they've had, you know, they have one of the more uh, robust, uh, you know, cap space, you know, situations right now as well. 
So, you know, th there's money to spend. So they have enough money to afford to know Hunter if they, they are able, if he's interested and they're able to, to complete that deal. Again, I would love it because I would love to just steal a Viking who's, you know, one of the, I mean, he's a fantastic football player. So yeah. it'd be really nice to be able to steal him. Uh, but that's, you know, for the most part, I don't know that there's that many guys that are out on the market that make a ton of sense that have any kind of ties to the bears that are sort of in that top tier anymore. I think, you know, we're going to get down to that wave two, wave three, where you'll start seeing the guys that have connections to the coaching staff or, um, you know, play for that guy, you know, five years ago, or, you know, the, he always plays in this scheme. We'll start to see those and, and that'll, yeah. that'll make some sense. But those are guys that, those are important, but those are not necessarily guys that move the needle as opposed to just kind of filling out that roster and trying to create something that's competitive um, for the, for the coming year. Um, yeah, I Cliff, uh, Cliff Victoria in the chat mentioned Noah Fant. That's a guy that makes some sense. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the guy's connection to the coaching staff, you know, the other Seattle uh, tight ends, you know, they signed for pretty decent money. So we'll kind of see what we're, how, how, how fans market kind of shapes up here, but, but I, I thought he might be the one that would get more money than the other guys. So, you know, maybe because he's not as much of a blocker a, as the other guys that, that the Seahawks lost, maybe his number will come down a little, a little more. Um, but I think fans, a guy, cause again, we, we talk about needs, you know, you don't have another tight end because Robert Tunyon's a free agent. Mercedes Lewis is a free agent. Uh, so you really only have Cole Kmet on the roster. And then Waldron, we did see last year, you know, again, he uses what he has on his on his team. Last year we had a bunch of tight ends. So that's what he that's what he went with. Yeah. I mean, you know, is that because of what he likes, or is that because of the personality he had? You know, hopefully it's the latter, right? Like you use the best players that you have available to you to um create your offense. But uh, I don't know that there is a lot more take. I, I anticipated more juice coming out of today, right? I thought we would get a little bit more, uh, you know, some of, you know, polls has been pretty active in terms of figuring out what this roster looks like though, right? Like he, he dipped into, uh, you know, capital for, for this draft to get Montez sweat last year, right? Like, I mean, this, we have this, some breaking uh, news. Oh, Noah Fant just signed back with Seattle. So, oh, okay. Well, there you, the there you go. He's, He's off, the board. off the board. Well, at least we didn't leave that um, in the podcast. <laughs> yes. We would be good. like, these idiots. Yeah, um, I didn't know. So, so, yeah, good, good, good breaking news there. Um, I didn't want him anyway. That's, that's the old, uh, that's the old, that's how you approach, uh, you know, any free agency period is if they sign with your team, great signing, makes sense right? Fits the scheme. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit of money, but sure. Like, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a smart signing. And then if he signs somewhere else, like, yeah, I'm glad that they overpay. Yeah. That was an overpay. Was he ended up getting money. pretty good money, 21 million over two years. So that's a nice deal for Fant and probably a little too pricey for, for what the bears wanted to do as your, as your move tight end, because Cole Kmet's still your primary. Uh, he, I just, I, at some point you got to spend, I mean, at some point, if you're going to play the free agency game, you're going to have to feel you comfortable spending yeah. money if you want these guys. And if you really want them, I, the, I had a tweet earlier, Christian Wilkins, who's a, a fantastic defensive tackle. Uh, one of the best in the game shakes loose from Miami be, only because they, 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 they went all in last year. They yeah. can't afford guys. Right. It's the only reason why he shakes loose. So it's one of those good situations where it's like, this is a premium player. This is a really, you don't get this opportunity, right? All week, all the Bears guys that I follow, like, I want this. I don't care what he costs. I, this is the guy I want. Like, yeah. what blank check, Brian Poles, go out and get him. And then he signs $110 million. Like, it was, it's a bunch of money. 80 84 guaranteed, dollars. right? 84 guaranteed. It's oh, a man. bunch of money, right? And every, Every account that was like, ah, whatever, blank check. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm really glad that the Bears passed that. I don't like it for that. It's like, hey, man, you can't do both. Yeah, you can't flip flop. Want them for yeah. whatever, or like, you know. So I just, to me, you, you just know, like when Julius Pepper signed, yeah. people were like, ah, that's, that's way too much money. It's like, no, nah, he's really good. Like, he's, yeah. This guy's, this guy's like a Hall of Famer. You know, he's, he's going to be fine. It's at some point you got if you're going to chop at that top of the market. You got to know that you're going to just reset markets. You know, you're you're gonna you're gonna sign a number that's going to look scary, and then in a couple of years, it's probably going to look fine. That's it. Just does not seem like Ryan Poles. Ryan Poles likes to maybe sign sort of the 
the non-premium positions and maybe maybe go after guys that are you know towards the top of of those markets it feels a little bit more comfortable there maybe he feels like there's some value overall in doing that but he, so far it doesn't seem like he's been willing to dip into the premium markets and and certainly not the premium players at the premium positions well that's probably good though because you want to do that when you think you're on the cusp of bears are on the cusp i mean they're on the cusp of hopefully pushing for a playoff spot i don't think they're going to be a legit championship contender i think they're still maybe a year away another good roster we build away from that but i mean we, we kind of saw the thing happen with with uh, ryan pace a few years back we kind of went all in signed a whole bunch of guys and it worked for a minute there and then it kind of just all fell apart because, you know, he didn't have the infrastructure in place. He pushed too much money down the road. He didn't have the right draft. He got the wrong quarterback, you know. Um, ho hopefully Ryan Poles has got a little better plan here. I mean, he's always talked about building for the long term, you know, but but like you said, at some point he has to say, okay, the rebuild has been a couple years in, two, three years in. Now we're going to go all in. This is this is our chance. Hopefully that's coming. I mean, if, like I said, we talk about, about Hunter. Maybe that's his splash. He thinks he can get his defense to an elite place because it was pretty damn good last year. You know, yeah. the top five towards the end. You're bringing in a, a safety who's who's quality. Hunter would look really nice. Uh, I mean, if they find yeah. Danil Hunter, it just it does really kind of that. That would be great. That would be a great outcome because now you've got a defensive line that you can feel really excited about. All three levels you should feel really excited about. And you can then focus your draft picks on the offense like that. Yeah, absolutely. I, if that happens, like we're going to, we're going to both be really happy guys. So, yeah. um, all right. So let's get out of here for that. I think that's a good day one recap. There'll be other guys that'll be on here. That'll react at some point here down, down the road. I'm sure, you know, Bill Zimmerman's going to have an opinion. I've already talked to him a little bit, you know, through, through uh, chat today. He, he's already got some opinions. So I think yeah. uh, you guys will enjoy hearing, uh, hearing Bill and, and uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just keep coming back. I don't know how frequent we'll do shows, but we will, um, we'll be along somewhat frequently here uh, leading up to the draft and, and the big decisions here that Ryan Poles has in front of him. And uh, we'll stick around a little bit for questions uh, in the, in the comments on the YouTube, but um until next time you guys you got anything that you want to plug on the website or anything um you know it's we, we may have a couple breaking news uh podcasts coming up um if, if there's a nice big signing someone probably will jump in and kind of share some thoughts but yeah it's it's all free agency coverage this whole week's gonna be nothing but that the trackers popping transaction trackers popping you know there's there's you know it's it's always something fresh always something new always something fresh all right guys all right. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, and until next time, bear down. I've got this stupid cold that it's okay. um, just kind of hanging on here. Yeah. So last week I wouldn't have been able to do this because it's just nuts. But I uh, survived the Carolinas, by the way. I was in the Carolinas for uh, running. I ran half marathon in North Carolina and then South Carolina. I saw and that. Two straight weekends and check off two more states off the off the list. Two more states and and they uh the wore my bear stuff and they they didn't no no one got in a fight with me. What are they you gonna know? say? They're Panther fans. I'm just saying they didn't you know they didn't get mad. I talked to a couple Panthers fans, right? You know, a little bit of got a little bit of you know you know trash talk back and forth a little bit. It's fun. We the Panthers play. lost Brian Burns today. Yeah, they they really got a big second, return after, after a second and a fifth was it? Oh my after, god! After uh, turning down two first round picks oh, man. Uh, from from the Rams, they got a second rounder and a fifth rounder. Something Boy, you if you're a Panthers fan, how do you feel right now? That's brutal. Uh, I'm just gonna start with this is the last comment that's in, but I'm so last in first first in the show. Right. Do you guys feel the Swift deal aged well throughout the day? I, I don't I, I don't know I've been I've been trying to start with kind of struggling with this a little bit because I don't know what it's going to look like here with the split you know so you know what does this say is this move saying something about the current guys you have on the roster like is this saying that Khalil Herbert isn't going to be re-signed by the Bears like this is is this saying Swift's the guy Clover will be here for year four and then we'll let him walk and we'll replace, you know, like 
I really like Khalil Herbert. I know he's limited, you know, so, so for me, like that was, that was kind of disappointment. Um, I like Swift more than I like uh, some of the other guys. Like I, I, I like Swift more than I like Tony Pollard, for instance. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I saw somebody mention Eckler. Like Eckler is toast. Like I, Eckler's, I, I like. He's toward the know. end if he's not already there. Yeah. I mean, he, I, I mean, I'm sure he could beat me in a foot race, but that's not <laughs> saying much. Um, but but he, he just NFL looks really slow. Yeah. Um, I I actually like Swift probably more than Josh Jacobs. But I don't know why I have such a low opinion of Josh Jacobs. It's just when I've watched him, he's just been really disappointing. Um, but like, Josh, Josh is more of a power guy. And yeah, I, yeah. I think as I think as Bears fans, that's nice if we have a power guy. But but you know what? I, I want a home run hitter, man. I want a guy that can take the ball, agree. stick his foot in the ground, and go. That's why we both are fans of Killer Herbert because he has that potential. He hits the hole quick. That's kind of how Swift is. You know, and plus he's way better out of the backfield. I mean, 195 receptions in his four-year career. Um, he'll he'll catch the ball. I mean, he can do some things for you in that aspect. So, it's a good signing. But but to, to go to the question here, yeah, I think as the day went on, we saw some of the other big money deals being handed out to running backs. I'm like, okay, I, I can kind of see why the Bears, because they were in on Barkley. There was a couple reports saying that they were one of the last teams that Saquon was was considering. You know, so I don't know if the Bears pulled the offer before Saquon decided to go in another, another direction. Um, but, but I'm okay with Swift. Like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a big pay the tailback guy, but Herbert's in his last year. Uh, Travis Homer's in his last year, you know, Roshan Johnson's on his rookie deal. So Swift will be here at least for a couple seasons before you have to make right. a decision there. So I just think this is the new NFL, man. You're going to always be, yep. be churning that spot. Swift may be your guy for a couple of years. Maybe he does so good. Maybe he, cause he just, had a career year in Philly. I mean, he's coming to his own. We talk about the injuries. He played 16 games, you know, last year in Philly. So maybe he's turned a corner. Maybe the best from him. Really is really good to offensive line in Philadelphia. He does have a good old line. Yeah, that does. That does kind of help. Yeah, it does. It does. I, you know, we'll see. Uh, I, you know, if you're going to play the free agency game, you got to know, like, yeah. you know, that that's, that's kind of, that's kind of my thing. Uh, I just, I liked this. Uh, not at that price. Honestly, that's what you just say to any yeah. free agent that signs with some other team. You just say that quote underneath it, and you'll get probably fifty likes on Twitter every time yeah. you do it. Just because, <laughs> like, it just doesn't matter. Like, no. it's just everybody. Everybody's particularly day one signings. Everybody's going to be expensive. Um, I just, I just think it's funny. Uh I, I've, I've seen this sentiment a lot that. The Bears only have five picks. So they're going to trade back. I don't maybe like I'm not sure that I know this for sure because you know you know in terms of roster construction and roster balance, you know, polls has said in the past, like, oh, you know, we really wanted this number of picks, but he's he's gone out and he's you know he traded that fifth rounder for Ryan Bates. So if he yeah. sees that as like, well, that's one of the players that I wanted to construct my team with, like I, I just don't know. And, and I think that he might be shifting his approach to say, let's just, let's just say that he's going to use pick one on Caleb Williams and then pick nine comes and he's like, and I'm going to pair that with uh, this wide receiver who I think is going to round out my wide receiver core. I'm going to take Roma Dunze or I'm going to take, uh, you know, uh, neighbors, right? The, the guys that are projected to potentially be there. And, you know, because I want to take a blue chip player because that's where I think we're at. That's good. Like I, I want more blue chip players. They, they, the Bears may be shifting that mentality from I don't necessarily need quantity. I need quality. I need I need these blue chip guys if I have an opportunity to draft them. So I don't know that polls has a like I need this number, you know, of draft picks. The other thing, this is what I think is important to remember with the fifth round draft pick is that everything I've read about this draft class is that it's just shallow. Like there's just not a ton of guys that you would have like a draftable grade on. So in some years you have draftable grade, more players with draftable grades than draft slots. So like you get into the undrafted free agent. These are guys that in a normal year you would draft. And that's like the last couple of years because of like COVID, COVID yeah. and all that kind of stuff. 
um, there were there were just these undrafted free agent classes where like these are really talented guys. You'd normally have to use a six round draft pick to get this guy, right? This is kind of this weird year of the opposite, where because of the shift with the NIL money, more of these underclassmen are go actually going back to school. That would be like in the fifth, sixth round or something. Like there's just kind of this weird shift where you lose all the COVID stuff. You don't have that anymore. And now you've got the NIL money where more guys are staying in school for a little longer. And so this draft class is actually shallow. So it projects out where the fifth, sixth, seventh round picks are actually more like UDFAs. And so is that why Ryan Poles felt pretty comfortable with saying, I don't really need this fifth round pick. I would rather, I would rather get Ryan Bates who I know I like, and I know I, I know what I get out of him and I'm going to plug him in as an interior offensive. I'm not taking a gamble on a guy that's borderline on draft of, you know, undrafted free agent type of player. And so for me, like, I don't know that he needs to just get more picks. I think he's trying to fill some of these positions with guys he knows can come in and start. Yeah, I, th- I think trading down from nine is on the table, depending on how the board falls. Sure, you know, but but you know, it's again, how many quarterbacks go before before nine? How many receivers go off the board? I mean, I saw someone in the chat mention Brock Bowers at tight end. I, I would like Brock Bowers at nine. I think that's a good pick, depending on who who else is on the board. So, I mean, the options there. Plus, they have two fourth rounders. You know, we can kind of see maybe he'll move back on a four to pick up a couple, you know, other guys. Again, it's how is this board stacked? You know, where is his value in his positions as as these are checking off his list? I think he, most GMs want to trade back if they can, but it doesn't always work out that way. Yeah. Um, everybody likes it takes two, right? Everybody everybody wants to trade out, but uh, if you I mean. Paul's even said that when he was talking about something. It takes two to tango. I've always liked that phrase when it comes to these deals. Yeah, you, you've done a lot of tango in yeah. your life? Well, maybe. No, not really. <laughs> so, I don't know anything about tango. Is that is that the uh, is that the, da- is it the dance they do in Son of a Woman? Is that what he does? I think so. Tango yeah. and Son of a Woman. That's all I got. All right. Want to get out of here? We got yeah. hang, out, hang out for an hour? Yeah, it was, it was, it was I thought we'd have more to March. talk about, but it's okay, you know. Maybe he's got something in store for us later tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. I know I'm going to be watching the site, watching Twitter all night, getting ready for the tracker, see what happens. So you just need like an alarm set up, you know, just need somebody to like buzz you with like a uh, breaking news. I've, I've got a bunch of texts and a bunch of calls when we're on the show and I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm on a show. <laughs> what's happening? So we'll, we'll see. I got to check all that, see what's going on. All right. Well, we'll get out of here. Thanks for joining us, guys. Really appreciate it. Appreciate and, it, guys. Uh, yeah. Um, like I said, we're it's not like the season where we'll be here every week, but you know, we're back on it now. We gotta we'll we'll be on a little more frequently. So um hopefully next time I have my voice fully back. Sounds fine. Sounds good. I like it. All right. Well, maybe it's just the microphone making up for it because I, oh, I can okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it, the microphone is like AI in it or something. It's it's a magic mic. Nice. Yeah. All right. We'll end it there. See you guys. Thanks.